Hello, everyone. Welcome. The one of the first things that Papaji ever said to me is to be free, you have to completely recognize, realize what is real and what is not real. And of course those words uh, need a little further clarification because they're words that get thrown around a lot and mean different things. And the way he used those words was, what is not real is what is subject to change. Meaning it's, it's here, so it's real when it's here, but it's gone, so therefore it's not really real. And what is real is what is really real, not subject to change. Not here and gone. Here, period. And then, of course, the invitation and the challenge is to discover that. And we have opportunities every moment of our lives to discover that. Only somehow in the human brain or the human psyche, there's a resistance to discovering what is unreal is actually unreal. What uh, wasn't here today, then appears here today, is subject to disappearance tomorrow. You follow this? So, especially uh, in the spiritual realms, usually the search is centered around getting something to appear in one's life some kind of bliss or some kind of samadhi or nirvana or eternal happiness that wasn't here before. And so in that we overlook what's here now. And of course we've all had moments of bliss and samadhi, moments of nirvana, of heaven. And then, luckily for the for investigation, we have discovered that they disappear, right? It's very important. But the weird thing is, is then we get uh, busy trying to get something that has proved itself to be subject to disappearance, to not disappear, right? You with me? some kind of state, emotional state, or mental state, or physical state. I mean, of course, everybody wants to feel good, healthy. Everybody wants to be emotionally blissful and mentally clear. But those states are states. And unless you have always been, every instant of your life, physically, mentally, and emotionally clear, healthy, and blissful. Which I'm sure there's some people it's true of. Certain rocks that you know, it's true of. It's not a human condition. Human beings are very complex in that uh, we experience many states, many physical states, many degrees of health and disease many degrees of happiness and sadness and despair, many degrees of clarity and confusion, appearing and disappearing, appearing and disappearing. And of course, there are those that are more likable, more lovable than others. It is more likable to feel healthy, to feel clear, to feel blissful. But so what? <laughs> Its likableness does not make it real. And so when this is uh, realized, there's a maturity, there's a recognition of the, just the physics of states. And in that there is a willingness, perhaps, to give up trying to make 
what is bound to appear and disappear, stop what it's bound to do, to, to withdraw one's attention from that, and actually discover what's always here, what's real. It's not so scary, is it? It is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know it is before you get here, but now that you're here, you take a moment and you're just here. My turn. If you like. Um, I have no doubt that. Uh, Radiant free consciousness is who I am. Mm. <laughs> but, um, uh oh. <laughs> okay, this will be interesting. Given there is no doubt no of who you are. But the attachment to the story is still there. What's the story? The story, the story I've created all my life, and nurtured and... What is that story? Can you give it to us in a nutshell? What? <laughs> I have a nutcracker here. <laughs> I'm going to put it right between these two. <laughs> This is the no doubt. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what's the story? In a few sentences, a couple of sentences. The me that's separate from you and separate from everybody else in the room. So that's a doubt that you are radiant free consciousness. And it's very important to recognize that that in itself is the doubt. So you may have had the experience and the understanding that you are radiant free consciousness, but when you are caught by the story or the belief that there's a separation between you and me and you and everyone in the room, that's the doubt. So you do have doubt. And it's very important to recognize doubt's present. Then you aren't relying on past experience or understanding. Because if you're relying on that and you're still suffering with some experience or story of separation, it's, the conversation ends. It's a closed box. But to open that box is to go, my God, this is a manifestation of doubt. You follow that? Yeah, I thought that was part of the problem, was the doubt. That's part of the problem. So you got rid of the problem by saying, I have no doubt. <laughs> no, I recognize the doubt, but... It seemed out of place, knowing that radiant free consciousness is who I really am. Forget that. Forget that. Don't know who you are. Okay. What a relief. Already yeah. you're more at ease. <laughs> you see what it is to carry around some knowing of who you are? I know I am radiant free consciousness. <laughs> Forget it. Don't know anything. Kind of goes away. <laughs> <laughs> you see how complicated that knowing is? And how in the knowing there's an attempt to get rid of what's been thought to be bad. So I'll know, I won't doubt, 
and yet I'm still suffering because I feel, I experience that I'm separate. So don't know who you are, and if you're experiencing being separate, experience it fully right now, completely. What does it mean to be separate? Teach me what it means to feel separate. Is there a feeling in your body? Physical sensation of some kind that I could generate so that I can feel separate? No. Is there um, anything going on in the throat? Or this area or this area? Any energy? Or oh, it's just a thought. It's just a thought. <laughs> Do you have this thought every moment? No, I have to think about it. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So this thought, when you think about it, appears. And then sometimes it disappears. So it's not real. Not, I'm not saying for you to believe that and now going, the thought I am separate from everybody is an unreal thought. Just tell the truth. Just notice this, this comes and goes, this thought, I'm separate. And you know what comes with that thought, I'm separate. And there are feelings that come with that. And then there's this, usually this desire to get unseparate. But if you just stop and recognize it's a thought, and I'm not suggesting that you substitute a thought for that, just let that thought go. Don't think that thought, just for this moment, just as an experiment. Don't think any thought. And if some thought appears, just see it appear. But if you don't think it, watch how it just crumbles. It takes uh, activity for a thought to continue. That's right. So what is here now that is real? It's not because you've used up that term. Yeah, I have. <laughs> that term has been corrupted now by uh, the egoic mind structure, which is common. It's become a kind of spiritual jargon. So let's toss it. Who needs it? Does radiant free consciousness need to be named radiant free consciousness? It used to, but not anymore. <laughs> but. Did it ever really need to be named that? Yeah, that's right. What a beautiful name that is. Radiant, free consciousness. What that says. Until it becomes enfolded in some thought. So what don't you have over there? <laughs> I don't have you over here. Because you can't be put any place, or thrown, or grabbed, or thought. Because anything that can be put over here can be moved from here, can disappear from here. But who you are is free of all of that, unthought. That's huge. That's huge. That's right. So huge that the mind in its attempt to grab it and understand it, takes a piece and calls it that. But if you recognize it's a piece, and that piece is like made of nothing, is insubstantial, the mind can open to the hugeness of what the mind is appearing in. What just happened just then? A glimpse of that hugeness. It's awesome. It can't be grasped. Well, in that glimpse, what was the experience physically and emotionally and mentally? That same release that 
It was just a thought I had before and letting that go. And now the same radiant free consciousness, letting that go. Too big. Then we're speaking of really self-inquiry. Too big. Uncontrollable. Unconditional. Unmanageable. Unknowable. And you see the release gets bigger too. Yes, yes. Very different experience, isn't it? Yeah. But this is an experience. This wasn't here. It's here now. At some point in the future, it won't be here. Because all experience is subject to change. Even the experience, the direct experience of what is not subject to change. But in an instant, as you, you called it, a glimpse, in an instant of some kind of alignment with direct experience and what is bigger than direct experience, a glimpse of the hugeness of reality, there's a, there's a shift. The challenge then is to not know that shift. To not take this moment and put it in your knowledge bank. To not save it. Because in the instant of doing that, there's a, a, a belief or an understanding that you have it. That you have it, rather than it has you. And then what was huge is made smaller. And that's all imagination. It's a fabrication by the mind. One of the great parts. If there is some uh, suffering of separation, don't know anything. Don't know that you are God or that separation is unreal. Just in that moment, don't know anything. Be separate. Fully and completely separate. And in that, you discover what separation is in. Anything to say? Wow. Wow, that's right. That's right, and the potential is for that to be fresh every moment. Otherwise, it's just some knowledge, that something you remember. This can't be remembered. Stop trying to remember it. And you find it here, in whatever else is appearing here, whatever emotion, whatever physical state of the body, whatever state of the mind. Then you don't need to know anything. Then your understanding is pure and fresh and alive. Not something that's relied on in case trouble comes. <laughs> don't tell me. You see, you can say that's my tendency. Yeah, the tendency is to know something and the tendency is to not know anything. Those are the tendencies. What is free of both? And we're speaking of true knowing. There's no word in our language for that. Yana. There's nothing to do with what we think of knowing and not knowing is. It's closer than that. It's reality, knowing itself as reality. Regardless of the appearance for however brief or long time of a body, Emotions, feelings, mental states, circumstances, everything that changes.
without a glimpse, it's all abstract. With a glimpse, that's a crack. It's a crack in the mind, hold. That's the essential experience. Whether it appears, whether it's come in satsang, in meditation, whether it's come in dream, all irrelevant. It's the crack. Then the response to that, the vigilance to that, is the willingness to not know anything. And see, then you see for yourself in this moment, freshly, what's real, what's unreal. Still here. I thank you for this inquiry. Very pertinent. Thank you. how we serve one another. That's what this meeting is about. Really serving one another. As a parent, separate beings, and discovering what is changeable in each of us, and what is unchangeable in each of us. And does that know itself in each of us? regardless of the changes. Thank you. You're very welcome. That's what Namaste is. Okay. It's been a long time. Years since we've spoken. Since we've spoken. I think that's why I came up. <laughs> oh, I've been sitting with you for nine years now, and this is the first time I've ever done this. Really, up yeah. here, but we have spoken oh, just in uh, smaller groups and radio shows. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So, and I was afraid maybe I wouldn't get a chance with you going to Ashland. This yeah, was, this should get some moment. people out of their seats. <laughs> <laughs> this is your chance. And I'm afraid I have a really trivial question. But it's <laughs> well, we'll see if we can make it less than, I mean, more than trivial. Uh, well, let's see. I've been guided for 20 years by a deep-seated mission around the media, as you know. Mm -hmm. And I spent the last year writing a script, a movie, a screenplay. And when I was writing it, I knew it was going to get made. And now it's done. And now I don't know it's going to get made. Oh, and good. You, you, <laughs> you finish with that knowing, then huh? And I'm still, like, I don't want to be attached to having it made, because it's such a long shot, and yet it's like in my soul and my heart and my spirit to do this. You are attached, right? Yeah. But yeah, so be attached. <laughs> You're attached. You want this made. I know. But I yeah. think attachment was a good thing. Bad girl being attached. <laughs> <laughs> so I shouldn't be attached. So then there's attachment, and then there's this level of shouldn't be attachment on that and whoa trying to balance that just to get down the street it's making me crazy really. it's crazy making you're attached so in this moment just be completely attached forget what you've learned about attachment being bad just be attached just experience attachment all the way okay <laughs> You think that's what's going to get it made? Is no. <laughs> no, ma'am. No, ma'am. Could even be in the way. <laughs> that's what I'm afraid of. Yes. <laughs> so then in this moment, this experience is your last moment on earth and your script never got made. The movie never got made. No legacy. No legacy. Nothing left. That's right. That's very... Uh, I think that's the hardest. Good. Because that's actually a mature desire, is to leave kind of some legacy of what your life yeah. was about, what you had to offer. Exactly. So, in this moment, if this were your last moment, as it may be for any of us at any moment, and it's not made into a movie now, what's the experience? If there is no future, no mm -hmm. possibility, no hope, it's over. 
feels a little like freedom. Yes. That's right. That's freedom. But not freedom like you should be free. <laughs> yeah. Not freedom that's in opposition to attachment. It's freedom that's here, yeah. that allows attachment, that allows grief, that allows mood changes and health changes and mental changes. And allows the flow. Allows the Where flow, of course. Us. Why not? Who has a trouble with the flow? Does radiant, free consciousness <laughs> have trouble with the flow? Or the stopping of the flow? <laughs> Who has this trouble? Is it some idea, some uh, imagined, it should be this way, I should be detached, or right. it should get made? Just let it all be here. It is all here. Anyway. It's all here anyway. And it's all disappearing anyway. I guess that's the good news, bad news. Yeah, it's the news. Yeah. It's the news. Whether it's good or bad depends on uh, how you respond to it. If you use it as a club to beat yourself up, well, unless you like beating yourself up, that's bad news. If you like it, uh, enjoy it. <laughs> enjoy it. Just tell the truth about it. You know, I'm, I'm leaving on Tuesday for L.A. to pitch the, pitch the, the script and it's like I hate doing it because it's so you know how it is in Hollywood I and don't have a clue but can I be in it you, you are in it <laughs> <laughs> you're actually in every line because <laughs> you've made a big difference in my life Gangaji, and thank this you. is a movie that has some meaning to it it's not a superficial movie thank you thank you you know I wish you good luck I wish everyone in this room good luck with everything you you feel is your contribution to life, individually and collectively. And I don't have a clue what will flourish and what will die on the vine. It's some kind of mystery. It's the greatest art, the most sublime teachers you never hear from, you never see. And some of the greatest you hear from, you see. What a beautiful, uncontrollable opportunity to let it all be in there. Yes. Thank you. And, and I just ask um, that you hold it with me in the light. It's a movie about the first American woman president, and it feels like it's time. <laughs> <laughs> and so if you all hold that with me, that at least we have something like it out let's there. Let's don't hold it. Let's let it go. Then okay. let's let it be free. Then it's not even your script, you know. Because mm -hmm. really, to tell the truth, there must be several other people writing a script Probably. like this. So, because this is kind of in the airwaves, yeah. so that you're part of a wave. We're all part of a wave, you know. Our generation, our subculture, we're part of a wave. If we start to say, "But this drop, this drop," let's just be part of this wave, and then the the light will shine on this drop or some other. But you've done your part. Yeah. That's all you can do. Mm -hmm. Is your part. The outcome, you have yeah. no idea. You have no clue. You just play it as full out as you can. Mm. It's really a relief, isn't it? It is such a relief and such a mystery and such a surprise. You know, such a surprise. Yeah. And what a delight surprise is. Mm. Yes. Thank so you, good. Good. And how wonderful that it got written. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It was a joy to do it, so that was uh -huh. the, that's why I did it. Great. Yeah. Good. Thank you for your gifts. You're so there are welcome. Many. There are <laughs> Hi. Hi. My first question. Can I touch What you? if you get one question? Can you touch oh, me? I'll, no, then I'll skip the first question. Okay. Can you touch me? Was that your question? No, that was not my okay. question. My, okay, my only question then. Good. Is you said that the goal is not to, like you're going to have, emo I'm going to have emotions, they're going to go up and down. You said the goal is not all these other things. So my question is, what is the goal? What is, like, what's the point of all of your teaching? To realize the truth of who you are. But why would I want that? Maybe you don't. You're not supposed to. I don't know if you do or not. Some people do, and those are the ones who I'm speaking to. If you don't, I'd say you're in the wrong room. 
I mean, it's kind of a mystery who does. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I guess most my question people to don't you even is, know what you're talking about. Realize yeah. yourself. I mean, why do you guys want to realize the truth of who well, you are? Well, that's irrelevant to you. Well, it's, it's either, there's either something that's appeared in hmm. you as some call for, I mean, I'm calling it realize yourself or know the truth or something. Let's don't name it anything, just some yearning, some that nothing uh, has been able to satisfy, nothing you've been able to do, even though there have been great satisfactions, has been able to really penetrate this very deep yearning. And I call that, just using language in transit, the yearning for oneself, for knowing the truth of oneself. If that yearning is not present, I'd say you're pretty normal. Well, see, the, <laughs> the yearning is there. I guess what I'm thinking is that if I can know what the goal is, then I can use that as a gauge to determine what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Right well, thing. it's not like that. It's not that no. uh, okay. manageable. <laughs> it's bigger. So you... You know, you play out what you have to play out and you see, has this that I really want, this yearning, really been satisfied? I mean, this, that's the way. I mean, most of us have to do that. I certainly tried everything I knew and everything I could learn from somebody else to do to get something fulfilled in me. Mm -hmm. And there were moments of fulfillment. And actually, my life was... Good, but there was still, when I told the truth, the deepest truth, there was still something unfinished, un, undone. And so for myself, at that point, I said, I don't know. I've tried everything. I need somebody to help me. I need some help. And I prayed for a teacher. And my teacher said to me, what do you want? And I said, freedom. And he said, good, stop where you are. But until you know what you want, mm -hmm. and until you recognize that what you want has something to do with something very deep inside, not however great it may be, just the right mate. And that's beautiful. But even deeper than that, whether you have the right mate or you don't have the right mate, what do you want? Not just for circumstances to be good, mm -hmm. which is wonderful, or to be successful, wonderful, or brilliant. Deeper than that. Now, when you want that, then we can have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually what came up for me was, it doesn't really matter what you're teaching as much as, you know, what am I looking for and can you Absolutely. That? Yeah. That's yeah. right. Because whatever you're looking for, that's what you will uh, filter through whatever you hear. Yeah, the problem, okay, so here's the problem, is that I keep thinking, okay, well then this is what's going to satisfy that yearning, you know, like and then what, I either get instance. pieces like peace, uh -huh. or satisfaction, or mm -hmm. confidence, or, mm -hmm. you know, something like that, and then... So you've gotten peace and satisfaction? Um, no... <laughs> I, but, you know, but that's but, but, I, did. but well, that's what the thing I'm trying to. But you've you know, gotten I, confidence. I, I, I've gotten yeah. You're I've confident. definitely gotten more confidence. Yeah, yeah. So that's fine. Confidence is great. And it helps. Yeah. It helps. And I not only that. does it help, but it's an actual reflection of there's something that's freer in there, mm. so that you feel confident enough to come up here and say what you want to say. Yeah. That's great. It's wonderful. I like it. Yeah. It's yeah. likable. It's much better than being, you know, you know, hiding in the corner. It's yeah. much, I don't know if you ever experienced that, but this is better. But it's still, as you say, it still hasn't given you mm. something that you still want. So if you don't name that, I mean, I've been naming it, but if we just drop all those names and you let your consciousness or your attention just fall into wherever you experience that, is that possible? You can close your eyes if you like, doesn't it? Right. And I think when when you're saying that, I, I get to... I'm just kind of there. Uh-huh. Where? <sighs> Not yearning. Not yearning. Yeah. Just kind of like... Oh, I'm just, kind of just happy. 
yeah. yeah. Not even happy, but yeah. Uh -huh. So now then the question is, is that you that's there, or is that you? You know, the, the answer I've been coming up with recently, I don't know, I don't know, I really care. Uh-huh, that's good enough, but now, in our play, we just play. Right. I like that, but you, it doesn't really matter once yeah, you're that's, there. That's, yeah. But for the purposes of what it is I'm mm. offering, which is realizing the truth of yourself, mm. when you say, I get there, I want to know what's the demarcation line between you mm. and there. And is there a demarcation line? Is there a separation between you and there? But what comes up is that the me is like the the um, the kind of pinpoint of consciousness. I don't know. It's the best kind of thing I come up with. And the and the space of fulfillment is more of like kind of more like an empty box. Um, so the fulfillment is more like something I can see, so the me is more... Like the fulfilled. seeing of the fulfillment. Now, I want, just with your attention, to go to this point that separates the seeing from what it's seeing, this fulfillment from what sees this fulfillment, and see, is that separation real? It almost feels like if, if it was separate, how could I experience it? Like that's right. That's right. There's the appearance of this little thing and this vast field, but when you get closer, and that's the power of attention to actually get so close, it's right in it. What is that separation made of between me and this field of? Satisfaction. I don't know, what is it made out of? Nothing. It's imagination. It's the same. This me and this field of satisfaction is the same. What's seeing and what's seen is the same. Not because I say so or because you should understand that. Do you? is to really investigate, is that true? Is that always true? Because in this moment, what we're seeing is this field of beauty, and, or at least contentment. But sometimes what's seen is uh, agitation and mm -hmm. anguish. So then the, the inquiry is to just as closely go into that. Okay, and I'm going to come back to my question. So <laughs> you've already gotten all that. What you're saying? Well, not not fully, but <laughs> yeah, but, my, fully but my question come is: back. So <laughs> if I spend time takes working a on that, second it takes a second. It took a second here, didn't it? How much time? I mean, you haven't even been up here that much yeah. time. But how much time was actually spent in that essential? Right, moment? right. Two seconds, yeah. one second, like that's it. How much time, how much of the rest of the 24 hours is your attention spent on trying to make something be something that it's not by its nature to be, or keep something which is bound to disappear, right. or create a cosmology, a metaphysics in your mind to explain it all? So this is just an invitation to stop for one second. Not to practice it, just to stop. Stop your practicing, just for a second. And investigate well, what's the truth. This, this that I perceive myself to be, and this that I perceive, what's the truth of that? And in the willingness for those two to be the same, what's the experience of that? I have no answer for that question yet. Yeah, 
That's good. Then if there's an open-ended question, there's no quick answer to it, then your life is actually potentially the answer. And it's a life of inquiry, a life of investigation. And the understanding or the insight or the cosmology or the metaphysics all come from that life of open investigation. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed it. Me too. Good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here you are. It's been a long time. How long? Since my last confession? <laughs> yes, my child. <laughs> oh no, one of these. Well, you're absolved. Go and sin no more. <laughs> um, since Satsang, uh, six years? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Here in Maria? Yes, and uh, I went to Maui uh, in 1994 mm -hmm. when you were doing satsang in Maui. Mm -hmm. And my sister and I came up to the house mm -hmm. and That's did satsang. Great. Yeah. So when my sister, who, uh, and, and, uh, so I went to the anguish and the despair of complete freedom. What a surprise. Who would suspect that freedom lies in the midst, in the core, at the bottom, despair and anguish? This is a secret. It's a pearl in the mud. And I continue to feel that freedom. I feel lighter. I, you know, something shifted. It's great. Good luck. But I haven't stood in the room with her yet. I haven't seen her face to face. You're not required to. Why do I feel that way? <laughs> Maybe you don't want to be in the room with her. I can think of a lot of people I don't want to be in the room with. <laughs> Come on. This is not being, I'm going to be in the room. This is, this is like, you know. It's well, funny. it's not, I'm going to be in the room. What it's, is it? You want to be in the room with her? I think so. You think you should be in the room? Uh, you know, I'm probably. I'm, not, well, I'm confused. Okay. I'm confused. So right underneath that confusion. What's the emotion? Fear. That's right. It's just we don't have much time now. Right. Okay, Let's just go right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Things moving. This is good. Okay. That's right. It if is there's fear. confusion, there's some fear. Mm -hmm. I'll just, I'll give it away. <laughs> and the mind's trying to quick get a position, quick get some clarity, quick get. If there's clarity, there can be fear, but it's you know it's no issue. But here's fear and there's some issues, so it's confusion. So what, what, just let's go to the fear. You're afraid of your sister, you're afraid of staying in the room with her. I'm afraid. afraid of how you will be when you Exactly. You're okay. I'm afraid of something. The, you know, my emotional tendency. <laughs> yes, well you, it would probably be there. So, if you just meet the fear of your emotions though for this moment, or the fear of the power that she has to evoke, certain emotions. Mm -hmm. Just make that fear right now. Mm -hmm. What's under that? Well, there's nothing. <laughs> right, so. But that's my fear. 
That there's nothing? No, that I won't have nothing when I stand in the room with her. <laughs> You're driving yourself crazy for, for nothing. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the thing that happens uh, with certain spiritual overlays. As you can recognize this uh, difficult relationship with your sister, and you can deal with it in your own mind. You can actually meet the anguish, the heartbreak, all of that that's been in there, the abuse of power, the, just the mess of it. You can meet that and you can experience freedom. But then there usually comes some idea from that of what should then happen. Therefore, instead of a but, it's a therefore. Okay. Just let that go. Why don't you just wait and see what happens? It's not up to you. Maybe you'll never see your sister again. Maybe you'll meet with her tomorrow. But if you don't have this idea, you don't have to go around dealing with this right. every moment. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's I'm wrong. a genius, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, <laughs> and so it's practice to let, because I can get there. In a right? way it's practice, it, but it's not exactly a practice. It's really telling the truth about what you are practicing. And that's what you just did here. And I just said, stop your practice. Take a break from this practice of thinking, therefore, I should, and maybe if I do, this might happen, mm -hmm. and what if it does? Just stop that practice. Give it up. It's a mm -hmm. practice to the devil. Mm -hmm. Isn't it a kind of possession? It's an obsession. It's yeah, an well, addiction. It's possession. It's, that's what it almost... Stop it. Give it up. Call Turkey. Say, no, I'm not going to practice that. No. Well, I'm not going to practice that. And that's what this is for. This is a support group for <laughs> obsessive practitioners of unnecessary suffering. <laughs> it is. Because it's so unnecessary. It's so I unnecessary. Just, you can see it's absolutely I absurd. I do see it. You didn't? Well, I do see it. You do it. see yes. it. Great. Well, yes. that's why we are here. Because it's not just located here. I'm sure most people in the room can relate to this in some way especially around relationships. Yes. Especially around relationships of the past. Yeah, I can relate to it. What's the trigger point? Because that's very good to, to discover. So I think about it. You think about it. So mm -hmm. what's the initial thought? What's the catch thought? The, uh, she, right. Uh, she just comes into my, con you know, just I see. So her she picture. Comes to my consciousness. There's a picture. Okay. And I, so far, so good. No problem. Okay. That's like a bottle. Somebody who's an alcoholic walking by a bottle of whiskey, or somebody who's a heroin addict walking mm -hmm. by a peddler. Right. On the, okay. There. So far, okay. This is going to happen. She's going to come into your mind because your mind has cycled through it so much. Then what? This is the crucial moment. Does some emotion come with that picture? No, I start telling the story, then the emotion comes. Okay, so there's your choice point. There's your choice point. And one way to deal with it is just go straight to the emotion that is, you know, written on the back side of the picture that okay. you start telling yourself. The other way is just to say no to the story. It's a, it's a hard choice. It's a junkie's choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is. That's it is a hard choice because there's a momentum and there's hope. Well, this time, if I tell it, maybe it won't end the way it did the last time. Mm -hmm. and, there, and there are techniques you can do to retell it in a way that has a better ending, but... It, it has a great ending. I mean, this, I went to the great ending of the story and, uh, and have had freedom through the anguish, through the despair. Beautiful. And the That's story beautiful. has a great ending. Well, let's celebrate the ending. Let's tell the ending. Well, maybe I didn't tell the ending. What is the ending? The ending is that
has nothing to do with the story of me and my sister. That's right. <laughs> you know, no matter, Thank it God. just doesn't matter. <laughs> and I so can know that Good. in a moment. That's right. That's the sobriety. We, we think sobriety is some kind of depletion or loss of, but it's this pure Freedom. land. Freedom. Yes, that's right. That's right. So you see exactly the point where you decide to unnecessarily imprison yourself with the obsession mm -hmm. in this relationship. And you just stop. And then whatever happens with that physically, about seeing your sister, you just, that, that is dealt with as it appears. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. Because yes. in that moment you are doing your, your separation and yet knowing. You stop doing your, I wish I had had this with my sister, cousin. You stop doing, you just stop. Mm -hmm. Great. Yes, of course it is. It's huge and it's, uh, you can expect the momentum to come back. You can expect the temptations to come back. They are huge and they promise all kinds of delights. Mm -hmm. So there has to be a willingness to not have the delights that are promised. That's the willingness to say no. Even though it's sometimes it may seem like, you know, anguish. What was, you said anguish in another despair. word? Despair. And despair. It's like, okay. If that's what it is, okay, anguish and despair, deadness, flatness, nothing happening. That's the willingness to have that rather than the addiction. And then in that you're also meeting death. You get to meet death. Because the addict is the hope of the life generated by the mind as reality. But it's not. It changes all the time. Reality is here. Mm. Mm, beautiful. So beautiful. I'm happy to see you again. Thank you. There's such support for this. Mm. Eli was on a radio show in uh, Utah yesterday, and he had a really great interviewer. And at one point he said, wow, this is so great, I can't believe it's happening in Utah. <laughs> and she said, it was AM too, mm. and she said, it's happening everywhere. Mm. It's everywhere. There is this deep yearning, there is this recognition, there is this support. It's here, and you just as you did here in this form, you just came up here and used it, along with everyone's attention. It comes in every form. Other people, by yourself, bad weather, good weather, good changes, bad changes, all of it. It's where the support is. <laughs> yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really beautiful. So ten years ago we met if that was 90, 94. That's mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. So then that becomes the issue. Will you receive the support? Especially if it doesn't look like you wanted it to, or I think it should. Because at least half the time it won't. Can you receive it all as support for realizing what's real, what's still here, freshly, what's bound to change itself? And this is the invitation. This is why we meet. This is why you realize the truth of yourself. Thank you for this meeting.
This is firstgov.gov, where we're obsessed with getting you government information. Brand new student loan applications on the site, baby. This calls for a celebration. Here's your uncle. So in the end, it was either take the astronaut gig or come work here. What can I say? Duty called. Dude, that's my cop. Oh, sorry. Yeah.